Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's October 9th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and for the most part, we spent the day in a tight range. You can see we started in this tight range right here, and we were working across, and once we broke lower, just measure that range, look for an equal distance, and that gives you a target right in there, and you can see we bounced there a few times and had a little failed break lower, and what I always preach about on these failed breaks that they often turn out to be important lows or highs if they break out the high and this in this case this turns out to be an important low because that's the lowest point of the day for the rest of the day and it was all the way up after that actually we sold off some after two o'clock but for the most part we had a nice move back up and also something to look at is we, we traded up into this range so Normally what's going to happen, there's actually a two-tiered channel here. We get a couple of bounces here. We don't get a setup on my chart. If you had a setup, we'll talk about it in a minute. Maybe you enter. But we get this break, and once we start higher, uh, you know, you might look for a measured leg up. First, I'd measure this first part. That would be my first measurement. And, you know, if that wasn't good enough, then I'd get the rest of that move. You can see we didn't get either one of those, but uh, anyway, that would have been probably your first target there. So uh, anyway, we but just remember that we traded up into this range. So once we start trending again, we're probably going to trend to the upside. Uh, really, by the time we've gone this sideways this long, um, you may not get a breakout. We end up do we end up getting one that went. It went higher. Notice that we're back inside the range by the time we close. But that's what you would expect. You would expect, since we traded up into this, you'd expect probably to have a failure out the low side and then go higher. And a lot of times you might fail out both sides a couple of times before it continues on with the trend. And that's what it did today. So um, really, for the most part, you're trading this range all day long up until one o'clock and so for maybe the last hour into two o'clock you could have traded this um, as another trend on the way up and there's two trends there we trended up we had a break a new high then we kind of trended down break in a new low and then we trended up on a second leg and I would have probably measured this first leg I would have measured here first and then from here and you can see we got close, but I'd go ahead and, you know, if you continue higher, go ahead and measure this whole thing. Well, maybe I'll get it here in a minute. Measure that whole thing and then start from that low. And you can see we didn't quite get that. And of course, when you don't get it, you sell off pretty hard. So, uh, but yeah, for the most part, you just played this range today with, um, while we were trending down here, it had a little bit of slight. Somebody sent me they chart, their chart, and they were looking at this as a downtrend here. Yeah, this has a downward bias, but you can see we're still playing this two-tiered channel up until we got a break here, and then we're just really going side. We trended up, down, up. We're just we're back in this range. So you really had to play this range for the most part, and you got some real tight ranges, and there's some trends within here. And somebody sent me something here. They went short here. We'll talk about it when we get to it. But just because this is a range day, you still get trends within a range. You can't ignore those trends. And the main thing here, you wouldn't necessarily be looking for a short here yet with this trend working up and this trend line. Um, notice you got a break outside, a new high, and then you sold off. So, uh, and the main thing too is if this is a range, sure we got a little resistance going right here. But here was your original resistance way up here, and we're not quite there yet. So you you would expect maybe a break of this trend line, a move to at least here. In this case, we shot on through. Unfortunately, you didn't get a good short up opportunity up here because that would have been a nice move back. But on my chart, there's no short opportunity. So uh, really, you know, I like these kind of days because they're ra rather predictable. Um, you know, at the very least, what you're trying to do is get long off these lows and get short off these highs. I had a, another trader that was trying to get up long off the higher lows and short off the lower highs. And yeah, those are important, but on a range day, you're looking to get long off the lows, as close to the low as you can, especially when they're tight like this, or as close to the high as you can, because you don't have room. 
if you wait on a high or low, you know, you, you don't have room. You'll run back into the support of resistance again. So the key is to get long on a, on this uh, range days as close to these lows as you can with a good signal bar and off the highs with a good signal bar as close to the highs as you can going short. So, you know, it's, you got to remember the plays and, you know, you're not just suddenly looking for a lower high or higher low because I talked about that specifically yesterday. Uh, but that's when you're looking for reversals. Um, if you get one that's close to the lows like this one right here, yeah, take it. But really, you're looking to get long right off these lows. So anyway, keep that in mind. So I'm going to back out. We'll talk about the trades uh, and we'll move along for the day. We'll make it a little bigger. But you can see how flat that is and how tight that range is. And you can see there's clear resistance up here and clear support. The support's a little clearer than the resistance because we were pushing a little higher occasionally. And you got this big stem, right? A couple of big stems here. But here's where you get most of your touches counting your closes. And 7 o'clock came right on this little move up here. And we had that little failed break higher right there in a big bearish bar. That's that's the perfect entry. Look how many times we turned down there. Now you got a great signal bar saying, hey, it's we're probably going back down again. Just, and this is a second entry short, too. Notice that swing low is lower than that swing low. So first entry, second entry. So there's two legs up, a big bearish bar. Just go short there, and right out of the gate, you got a nice, easy trade. There's a lower high right here i'm not as crazy about that one um you might have entered it the problem is is this one's got an equal high so uh, if it had broke higher and turned down maybe you go short below this one but here you got to wait and get short all the way down here and you don't have much room left there uh if you let it break lower and tick back and you could get filled where you would have got filled on that one then you could take that one so i'll mark it under that situation understanding that But you should already be in here, and hopefully maybe you're, you know, you might keep a runner. A lot of times if it's big enough range on these failed breaks, I keep a runner on those because those turn out to be important highs. And this did turn out to be an important high. Look how we traded all the way. We at least traded here before we had a big correction. So uh, if nothing else, you ride it down to here. And when you broke outside, maybe you go ahead and exit or whatever. So uh, there's a failed second entry long here. But notice what you're doing. You're going short right in, right into these lows. I went ahead and marked it so I wouldn't forget to talk about it because I guarantee there's probably somebody out there that took it. Uh, it would have worked, and we did push through and close a little lower, but notice how there's all that support. That's just a dangerous place to go short. So um, I'm, you, you just don't want to go short there because at this point, that's the range right across here. You don't have this second part, and this is not a midline. It's not until we start trending down that you start looking for your measured move down here and you know you got a two-tiered uh, range going across here. So, but we do push on down and now you got a little evidence and you come back first entry, second entry, and notice that's the first break of that trend line. Um, you might enter here. I like this one. So, um, just because it's the second entry, it does turn out the EMA. It's the first break of that trend line. You got plenty of room back down here. You don't have as much room to right here, but you could probably argue that, hey, we've closed lower. We could at least move this down to right here now because that's where most of your closes are going. And if you got enough room, uh, but you got to look, the main closes are way down here now. So I like that one. I went ahead and marked it. It's real close that you could argue it to be green just simply because we are, uh, you do have this support resistance line here and we are back above it so it could bounce which it does bounce but it still would have worked out so um, by the time you get across here and you start to see all this support and you're just going sideways again uh, there is a failed second entry long there but, you, but once you're going sideways forget about failures and traps because you'll just get whipsawed and it does drop on down and make that new low but it's not worth risking it so just stay out of that um, you could look at this as a failed break lower, but we weren't down to the lows yet. 
So, uh, and plus this is not a very good signal bar. If you had a good signal bar, um, cause it is off the big trend line. That's the main reason I like that one. Um, let me back out just so I can, I don't want to get you all confused here. You can see this is the main trend line working up and we bounced right off of it. Even though we're looking for this, the trend, the, the bigger pattern may be the two tiered channel working higher. So when you get that bounce right there, if you had a good signal bar, you could go long. Uh, you don't really get a higher low here until over here. And that, that's actually a second entry long right there. Um, but again, I don't have a very good signal bar. If you had a good signal bar right there, you might go long. Um, it would have worked, but it's just not a good setup on my chart. So hopefully you can see that. Let me back back out again now. So... Uh, and it turns out to pretty much be a failure and turn down, but I don't like taking a failure right there because this trend line's still in play and we don't know that we're going to here yet, but guess what? It drops straight down there and, um, you don't get a good signal bar down here off the measured move, but you get the higher low here and you still got a long way back to the EMA. Just go long right there. And of course, now you got a little trend line working up and you get a break here. You do get, um, uh, Notice you get a break and you do have a second entry long right there. Um, you might take that trade again. I didn't mark it. It's not a perfect signal bar. This one's definitely very bearish and this one's still got a lot of stem. So I think you're better off to skip it and then see what happens. You're just going sideways. It still would have worked, but just skip it because it's not a very good setup. Now, if you had a good setup right there, take it and you would have had another scalp. You wouldn't have got anything more than that out of it, but you would have had another scalp. And then notice we're going along and then you get a failed breakout and you get a chance to get short or the big bearish bar right near the high of the resistance. That's what you're looking for on a range and boom, a quick, easy scalp down and look where it bounces right across those lows where you'd expect. And then now you got a chance to get long here. Although that signal bar, I do not like it. It's, it's really an inside bar and it's got, you know, if it closes here, it's really a doji. So it's not a good signal bar. You're better off to wait on the high or low uh, if you have room. And notice how this pushes through, comes back and tests that breakout area and then turns up. You may go long there. Um, there is a little trend line working up. And this could be one of those important lows. Doesn't turn out to really be that, but uh, it would have worked. Um, again, it's a little risky. We're not back to the EMA. Um, we did close back above what turns out to be the midline on the two tiered range. So that's a good sign. We may head to the other side, but unfortunately we don't, we just start kind of going sideways here. Uh, notice you're still, this was kind of was the MO today. We'd run up and go sideways and then run up and go sideways, or we'd run down and go sideways. We got a lot of that today. Um, but we get a close outside, move to a new high. And now we're just kind of working lower here. Uh, we didn't really start lower till right here. So that's where I started my trend line and drew it off those two. And it seems to fit there. Um, there's probably a midline is probably what it is. It's probably just a little two tiered move. I didn't draw it like that, but I'm going to draw it like that for y'all because you're not used to looking at this stuff. So I want to make sure. And you can see there's definitely a midline through there. But notice you high, you try to go higher once, you get a second leg down, you try to go higher and it fails and look, and it actually went out the top and turned and went out the bottom. Um, if you want, you can go short right there, one tick below that bar on a trap. But if you had to wait on this whole big bar and go short right there, I don't think I would take this trade because that, that's a huge bar and, um, going short right down here into that low is never a good thing. There are 14 ticks in that bar. So there's, that's almost a three, uh, almost a four point bar. That's just a huge bar. And even going short one tick there, what you might do is let this bar break below this one and then drop a limit order back up in here a little further and see if it comes back and gets you. 
uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, and then drop. Uh, but if you saw it break higher and then turn down and go out right there, um, I'd be okay with that one because it's a trap most likely. And you see how quick it dropped on back down. And what do we do? We bounce down here. Um, right back down here at the lows again. Now, you might have considered going long right here uh, because we're bouncing off that measured move. But this has been pretty strong down through here, so I'd probably skip that. And you see we continue to go lower, but that would have worked. I mean, that's what you are generally looking for on a range day. But we didn't really have a lot of evidence that this was going to hold yet. It could have gone lower because that's a pretty good move down. It's two-tiered. We don't have any break of it yet. Um so I would kind of wait and see because you would expect prices if they do get through here to fail. Um, and that's when you'd probably look for your entry, getting close, getting a nice little failure out here. This one was close. I mean, you still didn't quite make a new low until here. And um, so that's the one I like right there with that big bullish bar. See, this bar is, this is relatively bullish, but it's not perfect. I'm going to go ahead and mark it green. But it's not a perfect setup. It's a pretty good bar, though. Um, and it would have worked. You got seven or eight ticks right there. So you could have scapped out of that pretty easily. Uh, when this one made a another lower high and another lower low, then you just kind of kind of wait. And notice how it finally drops lower. And you get that new low. And you're a little bit away from the EMA. Big bullish bar. I like going long there. Um, you're probably... Probably since we're still making lower highs and lower lows, you may be better off to wait on the higher low. And this one worked just the opposite of this one. It broke lower first and it turned and went out the other side. Uh, would I wait and go long right there? I, I don't know. I might let it break higher and then drop a limit order back in where I would have gone long. But when this broke lower and turned out, I'd probably go long. Just look for it to run back to here and it may go all the way to the top. And that's what it does. It ends up running on up. Um, back to the top and you don't get another chance to enter this one um, notice how it shoots right through all that resistance and kind of starts forming resistance right there it does come back to the trend line here the only problem I see is it looks like it might be an overshoot here uh, so I'd be a little leery about going long right there on a first entry although it is notice that low first entry Second entry, that's a failed second entry short. So you, and that is a fairly decent bar. So you may go long there and it would have worked, but it's just a little aggressive. I think you you, know, you need to wait on a, notice if you draw your trend line, that's the first break and you may come back. It, it's, it tries to come back here before it goes higher, but it can't. Um, and then you run up and a trader asked me about this because this is a lower high and he said, you know, he thinks because this was a lower high on a range day, you go short right there. Well, your first clue is you didn't break lower on this bar, plus your trend line's going up through here. And then all of a sudden you're, you do break lower on this, but now you got a higher low. Or I'm, I'm sorry, a higher high. So we're still in an uptrend here. We're not back to the, this is where you had your line drawn. This line right here is your highs. You end up getting new resistance here, but you don't know that at this point. You're still in an uptrend. And notice you come back and you test it once, you test it twice, and then you break lower. And this is the same thing. It breaks lower, turns up, and goes out the other side. I didn't mark this one because you're going long right into that resistance, which is never a good deal. It turns out to be a good trade, and it pushes right through there, and then it pushes right through the uh, original resistance from the original right range way back over here that's what that line is so uh, you just don't really have any trades across there you might take this long and if you were going to take one this would be the one to take um, I'll mark it green, but I just think you're better off to wait uh, because it may not do that what it did. Next time it'll run up here and turn back down and trap you out and then go up. So it does run up. Uh, again, now you got a failed break out the high side way away from the EMA, but you just don't get a setup. 
you're moving down and look what happens you bounce here again now you've now you've got that low you tested it once you tested it twice this one coming down you got a close outside a new low um, I like going long right there and you're really all you're looking for is just to scalp out of this but this turns out to be a pretty nice trade um, and then you run up here and make this lower high and this actually broke higher and turned and came out this side uh, we saw a lot of that today uh, in both directions and just because that happens doesn't mean it's a trade but when you make a lower high uh, on a failed breakout that's where that's where you're really looking to enter back in this thing hoping that it's going to be a failed break higher and that's your lower high believe it or not from here um, and you got a little trap with it to boot and this would have worked again it's not a perfect setup but it is a little bit of a trap with that break higher and then turning and going back out the other side. But your entry is one tick below that bar, not this bar. If this one closed like this, I'm not going short below it. Uh, just it's not bearish enough. We do it, it. It works. And then, of course, you bounce, make a higher low right here, draw your trend line off of it. And then you come back again right here. Uh, somebody asked me about this entry right here. Um, because it was a high or a low, but you're right back into your, oh, the original resistance right here. And so, but when it tries to turn back again and then goes up, that would be the place to enter. Cause now you're back above that resistance. You're closing above it and, um, you've got another little tick back. So now you got this low first entry, second entry, plus you got a new high first entry. You pull back and if it breaks above that, it's the second entry long. Uh, we do push on up and you get a little failed second entry short there because that's a new swing low. It's it's lower than uh, this right here. There's a double bottom, so that's a new swing. So first entry, second entry, it fails. Fairly bullish bar. You still got a little room back to the highs here. Uh, it's not a great setup, but I marked it because it, it does fit what we're kind of looking for to reverse and start trending up again. And I didn't see anything else up in here I was willing to take. There's actually a short-term trend line here too you can see that so that would have been a confirmation of that trend line as well and you had a few more bounces up through here but it's just too close to two o'clock and they're not very good entries so pretty good day uh, you just got to be real careful in this stuff here and um, But you can see when you back out of this thing, that's just pretty much sideways. There's two tiers to it. This is turns out to be a midline before the day's over of a two tiered range. And again, this, you know, it's 2908 to 2920. So that's basically a 12 point range. You might could argue it to be a little higher. 12 to 14 point range. That's a big enough range to get trends in. So you can see you got trends working in here. Uh, early on, you didn't probably want to play this one down here, but once you knew that you got two tiers, you got enough room to have a nice trend here. And so you got to be careful, try to get short before you get back up to the eyes. You need a really, a really good trap right here to get short. Uh, Basically, I'm talking to the gentleman that tried to get short right in here on a lower high uh, because you still got this trend line working up and you're not back to the high. So you at least want to get outside that trend line and get some kind of failure to the upside before you go short. And you just, like I said, you don't really get it. The only one you might have taken would have been this one uh, because you are going sideways. So you might have gone short right there. I didn't mark it. Let me back out where you can see that. But you might have gone short right there. I'm only going to mark it green though. Because that gives you a fairly bearish bar close enough to the highs. If you got enough room to get out, you may take that one. But that's really the only one I would have entered because now you got a break outside and you don't quite have a new high, but you've made a double top. So you might consider that one. But really, at this point, you're just kind of playing this range, and, and that's the reason you may take that trade. Not because of anything to do with this channel, but mostly because you're going sideways. And the only way to trade this 
is to try to get short right along this resistance here or long right along this resistance. That's what's wrong with this one. By the time you can get long, you're already back up to the highs again. And you may turn back down, and that's the problem. So you got to get short more like this near the lows. But anyway, I hope that's helpful. Quite a few trades today. Uh, if you understand range rules, many of them were very straightforward. Um, it might have got a little tricky in here because you don't know if you're going higher or not. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.